When Chris Bailey, author of the Productivity Project, graduated from college, he declined two lucrative job offers. Bailey didn't want a job because he wanted to focus full time on his passion, productivity. From watching 296 TED Talks to working 90 hours a week to waking up at 5:30 a.m., he has done it all, and he found a philosophy, a strategy, and tactics that improve his productivity. So here are the top five lessons from the Productivity Project. Lesson one. Think your productivity in terms of energy, time and attention. There is a fun analogy about life curse concerning energy, time and money. When you are young, you only have energy and time. When you are grown up, you have energy and money but lack time. And when you are old, you have money and time but no energy. Productivity from Chris' perspective is similar. You can't run on just energy and time or time and retention. You need all three. Energy comes from your health. If you are too weak to work, all else is meaningless. Time is a skill you can learn. It's about managing your priorities. Attention is what makes having the other two worthwhile. If you spend all your time and energy chasing distractions, that's no good either. Therefore, productivity becomes a mix of health, time management and designing your environment to reduce distractions. Let's look at one of the tools he found for time management in lesson 2. Lesson 2. The Rule of 3 In a book by a Microsoft executive called Getting Results The Agile Way, Chris found a way to chunk his goals into more achievable milestones. It's called The Rule of 3 and prompts you to think in 3 time frames. What 3 things do you want to accomplish today? Which 3 milestones do you want to complete this week? What three goals do you hope to achieve this year? Answer the first question on a daily basis to make sure what you do align with your weekly goals. This will also help check how your weekly target relate to the big picture. This is a full productivity system in a nutshell, but it needs one tool to function, your calendar. When planning your daily and weekly tasks, make sure the size of the chunks you pick does not collide with what's already in it like birthdays, car repair appointments and the other necessities of life. Lesson 3. The 40-hour work week In his experiment, Chris went all the way from 20-hour work week to 90-hour work week and found he accomplished more or less the same in both extremes. Thus he thought he might as well pick the middle and work somewhere from 40 to 50 hours. The studies he looked at confirmed his approach, showing a step decline in workers' productivity after crossing the 55-hour mark. After 60, it even takes us twice as long to accomplish whatever task. Of course, you have to find your own rhythm here, but neither extreme slacking nor a burnout work ethics will lead you to much more accomplishments at work. So take it easy. Lesson 4 the six procrastination triggers. Procrastination researchers have identified six particular triggers that contribute the most to making us procrastinate on the task. A task is will be aversive if it is boring, difficult, frustrating, unstructured, lacking in personal meaning or lacking in intrinsic rewards such as being fun or rewarding. Knowing about these triggers is useful as you can use them to pinpoint exactly why you are procrastinating on a particular task. Using that information, you can then devise solution to make the task easier to get into. For example, if you are procrastinating on doing your taxes, make the task less boring by doing them on a Saturday afternoon at your favorite cafe while people's watching. Lesson 5. Biological Prime Time since managing your energy levels is just as important as managing your time, it's useful to know at what time of the day your energy levels are highest. If you know that, you can plan out your day's task to ensure that the most challenging brain intensive work is during this period. In the book, Chris calls it your biological prime time and the key insight is that it's personal. Not everyone will have the same BPT. So it's important to figure out what yours is. 
Chris set out to discover what his biological prime time was. So he spent a couple of weeks tracking his hourly energy levels using a 110 scale. Afterwards, he learned that he had the most energy during the 10 am to 12 pm and 5 pm to 8 am time periods. So these are top 5 lessons from the productivity project. Accomplishing more by managing our time, attention and energy by Chris Bailey. If you want to learn more about productivity, then buy the full book from the link in the description below. If you find this helpful, then subscribe to BookBug and start your journey towards successful life.